Hope you'll be much praying prayer for our revival coming up uh, here in the next five weeks or so. I'll be going out to Texas to San Antonio to preach in about two, two weeks. Uh, I believe that, so you'll be praying about that also. And, uh, and pray the Lord just do something real and save souls. Genesis chapter 41. Uh, this is a story of those back when Joseph was down there in Egypt and they were having these seven years of famine and seven years of plenty first and then seven years of famine after that. And I'm going to pick out one of the years and use it for thoughts this morning. This is what's on my heart. Verse 31. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following. For it shall be very grievous. That's on about good year, bad year. I want to preach this morning on the subject 2020, year of plenty. 2020, year of plenty. I hear it all the time. Everywhere I go, people say, Brother Danny, this has been the weirdest, scariest, strangest, craziest year that I've ever seen in my life. And I come with a word for you this morning. I've got good news and bad news. The good news is, thank God, the first half of 2020 is over. Hallelujah, we made it halfway. The bad news is, the second half is probably going to be worse. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's awful, isn't it? Uh, good news, bad news. But I want to call 2020, you say, Brother Danny, are you really, really going to call the 2020 the year plenty? Yep. And here's my thought that I felt like the Lord laid on my heart. Plenty. We had plenty. I want to say first this morning, we had plenty of propaganda. Plenty of propaganda. You hear that word comes up occasionally in academia and out there in the world, newspapers, stuff like that, not in the Bible, but the, def, the, the, the definition of it sure is. And um, the definition of propaganda is information based on or, or, by, or, a, or, or of a misleading nature to promote a particular point of view. Propaganda is a bunch of information, false or misleading Truth mixed with error to promote a particular idea or a point of view. It's like um, um, if I really, really didn't want y'all to go outside, and I just, I'm just convinced that I don't want nobody out there, nobody here to go outside. And I would say, listen, y'all, it's, it's looking like it might rain. It's looking like it might rain. Experts say that it might rain. The leading authorities say that it might rain. And I said that up here for a solid hour to keep, I would, I'm, I'm not really telling you right. I'm, I'm trying to convince you not to go out there because I don't want you to. That's propaganda. It's not like saying, well, it's a beautiful day outside and there's about a 20% chance of a shower this evening and if, if you choose to go out, be careful after a while it might rain. That's the truth. But if I say, if I say, it ain't going to rain, it ain't going to rain, it ain't going to rain, everything's perfect out there, the weather's 68 degrees and all that, that's trying to get you to go out. Neither one of those views are exactly right. That's what we call propaganda. It was used in Nazi Germany by Hitler and all of that. And, 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 and what, what it is is it is a, it is a effort to control a, a society. I've left this thing alone now for a few weeks, and I've just been preaching uh, good, hard gospel Bible preaching and salvation message, and, and it, it wasn't even mentioned at, at camp hardly at all, hardly at all, but as a pastor, sometimes I have to address certain issues because as the, as the pastor of this church, uh, some, a lot of people come saying, Brother Danny, help me. I've had people say, Brother Danny, how, how do I think about this? How do I supposed to feel about this? Help me. So that's, that's my job, and I have a lot of people that watch me on YouTube because of that. They know when they come here, and they know when they come to our YouTube that they're going to get a clear, balanced, fair, biblical,
critical view of what's going on. There's a lot I don't claim, but that is one thing I claim to do. Clear, balanced, fair, biblical, most of all, point of view. So I'm going to have to talk about some issues this morning uh, that's going on. And uh, uh, when, this th- when this first started about this pandemic and the coronavirus and then all the other stuff, I said from day one, something stinks. Something ain't right about this. This is not just a normal uh, virus that got out of a hand and escaped a lab in, in China and wound up over here. There's something stinks. You ever, you ever walked in a house and say, something stinks in here? And the people that's been in there don't notice it. And then maybe you go out and you come back and say, something stinks, something dead. You might, uh, you might find a rat underneath the cabinet. Or you might find uh, uh, something underneath and you say, there's what it is. There's what it is. Well, that's the same way I feel about the situation of our country and the world. Something stinks, y'all. Something don't add up. There's something way, way, way bigger going on than just a, just a sickness. After World War I, uh, they dumped millions of dollars into building a NWO. That's a new world order. And it was saying the only way we're ever not going to have war again is get all the world's countries together, believe in the same thing, thinking the same thing, and it's a new world order. Anytime uh, we're almost there, the world changed. The world has changed this year. In the last four months, the entire world has changed, I, I believe, and I can't prove this. I'll just tell you what I think. Uh, if I if I can't prove it, uh, it feels like we are uh, in a drill. Uh, this is a trial run. It's a dress rehearsal for bigger and worse things that are coming down the pack. Uh, do I believe this is an end? No, I don't. But I could be wrong. This could be uh, what many say are the beginning of the end of life as we have always known it here in America and around the world. I don't know. But I know the global elite, there's a group of very, very powerful people in the world that would love to see a one world government and a one world monetary system and a one world religion and a one world leader. They believe that's the only way we're ever going to have peace, reduce the population, get population down to uh, uh, about a, 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 a billion or a half a billion, which if you wait long enough and do enough birth control and enough stuff, eventually that's, that's their plan, and the elite can live happily ever after. Now, there's three ways, three things you got to remember as how to change the world. Problem, reaction, solution. Problem, Reaction, solution. There's a huge problem. They look at our reaction. The reaction of people are, oh no, what are we going to do? We're all going to die. Everybody's going to die. Solution, the government tells us what we got to do. So the problem gets people willing to just go along with anything if the government can just save us from the problem. Uh, who would have ever believed? Uh, did you know quarantine? You know what quarantine really is? Quarantine is for sick people. Quarantine, it's all, that's the definition of it down through history. You quarantine sick people. Uh, when healthy people are ordered to stay home, that's not quarantine, that's house arrest. There's a big difference, and we are moving in that direction. They say this is, this is propaganda, propaganda. You keep repeating something enough, uh, it, it, it catches on, and people start believing it. Just like they said the other day, there's 250,000 new cases of the coronavirus just in these first few days of July. Now what that's doing, and, and every day, it's more, it's more, it's worse, it's more, it's worse. You know, about a, about a month ago, people thought, well, things are smoothing out. We're doing a little better. Things are opening up. Things are doing good. Well, things let up a little bit, and things started prospering a little bit. Now all of a sudden, we're right back where we was a few weeks ago. Have you noticed that? Uh, it's awful. It's awful. It's awful. It's awful. It's awful. It's awful. Did you know 
uh, how much of that's true and how much is propaganda, I don't know. I'm, I'm not saying the coronavirus is not real. It is real, and, it, and it, people get sick. People, die. It's serious. I'm not downplaying the virus at all. What I'm downplaying is the propaganda they're using it for to produce their end goal of a one world global government and break the American economy so that we'll finally just give in. That's what I'm against. Did you know you can take your phone and somebody showed me this most the weirdest thing ever and you can put Google in and put any three numbers you want. One, two, seven, seven, four, nine. 876, do not do this during church, 862, and it'll pop up no matter what number you put in. That's how many new cases there were yesterday. Try it, any number. Try it after you get out of church. Now, is that possible? Probably. I mean, there's a lot of cities in this, war, in this country. Is that pop Probably. Do I think that's true? No, I don't. Something... Fishy's going on, y'all. Something extremely fishy is going on. Now, Dr. Fossey, now, whom I like the little guy as a person. I admire him. 80 years old and runs every day. And I mean, he's a role model for me. But he's, he's, he's got off into the wrong side because what he's, what, he, what he's saying now is shut the country down, basically. And uh, that's not, that's, that's not, an answer for a disease, that's propaganda. I'm not a doctor. Don't claim to be. I, I may get deathly sick tomorrow. I'm not denying it couldn't happen to any of us. I am saying this. We are participating in an AI, artificial intelligence, uh, as an experiment. Did you know cameras work better on face recognition in a crowd if people are a few feet apart? Do you know that they're being developed now to recognize everybody? Why? Why? What, we're, what, what this is is a test to see who will comply and who won't comply. I believe you ought to obey the law. I try to obey the law. If something's a law and they said obey your local authorities, whatever their sheriff says, we, we ought to do it. We ought to try to do it. I'm not saying break the law, but ladies and gentlemen, if the news constantly saying this is more, this is more, this is more, this is more, there is propaganda in that. No matter what kind of totals come up, you can set a new record for this. It's like basketball does that. And I began to notice that a year or two ago. They said, uh, well, uh, so-and-so averaged more points than anybody in the fourth game of a series on the foreign, on another, on a visiting floor. Well, Lord, you can make up statistics about that and make anybody uh, uh, a record holder. You can make up statistics and it be true, but present an idea and it's strong delusion that it's coming across our country. Uh, we've had 40 million people tested now. Of course there's going to be thousands and thousands and thousands more positive cases. Now I'll tell you what they're saying now and I can't prove this. They're saying now if in some cases the way they're being counted if, a, if you test positive for coronavirus they'll test you if you've been around 10 people those 10 people are presumed cases of coronavirus. Presumed. That means they presume that all of them could have it. And the next thing you know, if you violate a stay-at-home order, you could be arrested. But if they're letting out thousands of criminals so they will not get the coronavirus... They're locking you up because you might give it to somebody and letting prisoners out so they won't get it. Something stinks with that. Do you not think it's a little weird that Bill Gates produced a Netflix movie in November of 2019? That was last year. I'm trying to get you to think levelly, level-headed. Forget who you like and who you don't like. Think level-headed. Forget what you believe, what your politics. Forget politics. Think about truth. Bill Gates produced a Netflix video. They started on it in 2019, and the name of it was Pandemic. 
and it was about a virus, coronavirus, that escaped out of a lab in China lab and killed millions of people. Is that a complete coincidence? Maybe. I doubt it. I doubt it. You say, well, what was it? It's getting people ready for what's coming. Did Bill Gates know this was coming? I don't know if he did or not. I doubt it. But you forget the chief conspirator is Satan. And the devil is working in all this stuff. And he sees an opportunity to grab them together to worship him when he shows up in the flesh, the Antichrist. And he's whipping, he's whipping the world together to get ready to worship the devil. Do you realize this, this morning that uh, uh, they, they'll say uh, this, you, you, can, you, can, you can't get a haircut for months and you can't visit your grandmother but you can go visit, get the liquor store and buy a fifth of liquor and stay drunk off government money that they're giving to you? Do you realize how hypocritical and wicked that is? Do you realize that last fall, October of 2019, they had pandemic exercises called Event 201 conducted by John Hopkins University where the, the numbers are coming from in October 2019 conducted and supported by none other than Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the World Economic Forum. Do you realize that they had a coronavirus vaccine program early in January where they, they, they produced vac, working on vaccines and stuff for a coronavirus led by none other than Dr. Fauci himself? And did you realize, funded by the Gates before we ever even heard of this. Do you realize the government didn't lay off nobody while you were told you couldn't go to work? You couldn't get a hip replacement if you were hurting, but you could get an abortion? Are you kidding me? You couldn't buy seed to sow in your garden, but you could buy weed to stay home and get high on all day and believe the garbage they're feeding into you. You couldn't go to your mother's funeral. But all them politicians and can go to a press conference and sit there. You can't even go to your own mother's funeral. Boy, somebody going to answer to God one of these days for junk like that. You forbid people from going. I, I, we all know people that couldn't even go to their own family's funeral, y'all. You couldn't, you couldn't buy seed to sow your grass, but you could buy a lottery ticket. We were told it's an emergency health emergency. Is a drill, brother. It's it's a house arrest by the government. We're going through obedience training. That's what we're doing, and uh, uh, you, you you can look at it any way you want to. But you are you are you are are conditioning to just obey whatever the government says, and eventually that's bow down and worship, or you don't get healed. To Satan and take the mark of the beast. That's where it's headed. 67% of all our churches are still closed. And most of the ones that have gone back to church say it's dead than 4 o'clock and people don't even want to come and there's no spirit and no power. My words now are being stored to be used against me sometime in a court of law. The words that I'm speaking, all this time church sat down, everybody went online, all that's stored in the major bank somewhere out there in Utah somewhere. Words are stored. So, see, we're protected right now. we still got the Constitution. There's a major move on right now. Just do away with the Constitution. They want to rewrite everything. They want to reset. Put, they call it reset. Start the country all over again. Have different rules. All that. And that time comes, and then there's a ruler comes in that don't like Christianity. My words will be against me. The time may come if the Lord don't get us out of here before it that I could go to jail for what I'm saying up here because I'm speaking against the establishment. And that's what it comes down to. You can, you can, you can hate what you, they can hate us, but we can't say anything against what they do or believe or we are a hater and we get thrown in jail. That's the way it always, that's the way it was in Germany. You were not allowed to speak anything against the government. The, the, the fake government is we believe in freedom of speech till we get in power and then when we get in power you lose your freedom of speech 
that's where we're heading in America, y'all. They're censoring. They're censoring preaching. They're censoring anybody who takes an opposing view. They're censoring. We are in a drill. Plenty of propaganda. Number two, 2020 is a year of plenty of problems. We got plenty of problems, y'all. I told you when this shutdown happened, I stood right here in this pulpit and I said, if they shut everybody up and people can't go to work and they're locked up in them apartments in Philadelphia and Chicago and New York and, and California and Florida and North Carolina, crime will skyrocket. And it has. You can't coop people up like a bunch of animals and feed them propaganda through a TV and turn the heat up to 90 degrees like it's been this summer and not expect all hell to break loose. And that's exactly what we're seeing in this country. The NYPD, New York Police Department, has said this. Murder is up in New York 30%. Car theft is up 50%. Gun violence, 130%. You say, well, I think the government ought to take everybody's guns. If they did that, you know who would give up their guns? Law-abiding people. The, you think the criminals, I mean, come on. You honestly think gang members and criminals are going to say, okay, we're going to obey the law now. Here's our gun. It ain't never going to happen. Brother, there's more guns in this country about it than there are people. Yes, sir. Gun violence up one. 130% what it was the same time last year. That's 2.3 times as many gun violent crimes. Burglary, 118% up. Drugs, skyrocketed. Suicide has absolutely went out the roof. They're saying more people, people are saying there's nothing to live for. We're never going to get back to normal. I see no future. I see no way out. Bam. Taking a gun or overdosing on drugs. Alcohol. Do you know? I, I, I've even said it myself. I said, boy, I sure am glad all them old bars are closed. Do you think it's kept anybody from drinking? Al uh, they, they interviewed some people that run a distillery and winery, and they say alcohol sales are out the roof. Everybody knows, well, I can't go nowhere. I'm in Michigan. They won't let me plant grass. I'm in, I'm in California. I can't go to the beach. I can't, I'll just go get me some liquor, turn on wicked movies, and sit there and stay high and drunk throughout this whole thing. And alcohol, has, the domestic violence, men hitting women, and, 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 and women hitting, shooting men, and beating kids and everything has gone out the roof. I could tell you stories of kids sitting right in this church this morning that would shock you. It sounded like something you'd hear on big time news somewhere just from coming home from camp this Friday. I'm telling you, we got plenty of problems, brother. We got plenty of problems. Our major cities, they say, are going broke are going broke. Atlanta just the other weekend had 31 murders. Chicago had uh, something like 100 kids, and they're killing teenagers, 15, 16-year-olds, and 8, 9-year-old kids just being murdered. For no One guy was walking his daughter, 6-year-old, across the street, and somebody just shot him for no reason at all. That Bible said in the last days, perilous time shall come. We're there, y'all. We are there. Uh, 2020 has plenty of problems. We've never seen lawlessness like it is today. Uh, 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 all all the, uh, the, the riots and everything, the hatred, the racial tension, the murder, it's absolutely unbelievable. Nobody that's got a half a brain supports police brutality. Nobody uh, like what happened to George Floyd. That was terrible. And there are a lot of bad cops that ought to be fired and got rid of. And cops need to be trained right and rethink something. There's no argument with that. But the most of them try to help people and try to do good and try to encourage people. And they're saying, we don't even want no cops no more. Boy, well, you see where that gets you. You see where that gets you. Now, what I just said, I'll give you a verse of scripture for it. Proverbs 9, 8. You rebuke a scorner and he'll hate you. Rebuke a wise man, he'll love you. That's for all of this. The people in the riots don't even realize that they are being used by some big shots with a lot of money to destroy the country, bring in the one world government. 
marriage is breaking up. Absolutely unbelievable. People that's been married for years, fussing and fighting. I'm telling you, I, I won't stay married no more. I'm, I'm just going to go out and go wild. I'm tired of living for other people. Now look, you know what the a big problem we have here is people telling people that me, men and women are equal. That's, honestly, that's about the dumbest thing I ever heard in my life. You can't, you can't have a brain think men and women are equal. Lord, I don't even know if we're kidding each other. Men and women are so different, it ain't even funny. And the most confused person in the world is a man who's trying to be a woman or a woman who's trying to be a man. I told them kids at camp, we don't want no girly boys in here. We don't want no boyish girls. Lord, it's, you're confused enough just being what you are instead of trying to be what you ain't. And I, I, I know some of y'all this morning said, Brother Danny, you shouldn't say that. That's how messed up we are. I'm telling the truth. People in church say, I don't like, so that's how bad off we are. You know that's the truth. I only hope you got your marriage being right is both of you get right with God and serve God together. When I said men and women are both equal, I didn't say one was better than the other. I said one thing, you heard what you wanted to hear. Amen. Amen. The truth is women are better people than men most of the time. See, you say that, that's right, Brother Danny. Men, men provide, invent stuff. Oh, he's against women. No, you're listening to demons. That's your problem. You need to pray about listening to demons. I'll tell you how different men and women are. I, I, every time I marriage counsel, she said, the wife always says this. He just don't get it. He just don't get it. He just don't get it. And you know, that is true. So husbands, you can't get it. So just act like you do. <laughs> I'm, just kidding. I'm just messing with you. I'm just, how many of you men in here, your wife tries to say, why can't you see it? And you say, honestly. I try my best to see that, and I can't. We do. Man and woman have serious marriage problems. So finally, she talked him into going to a counselor. They went to the counselor. They sat down. They sat down to their counselor a little while, and he said, all right, who would like to speak first? She said, he said, she said, he said ma'am, you go right ahead. Oh, she lit into him. I mean, he's this, he don't do that, he don't do that, he don't pray, not take me, he don't love me, he don't blah, 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 15 minutes. He said, you got anything to say, sir? He said, <laughs> he said, do you want this to work? He said, yes, I do. Well, he said, here's my counsel. He picked, the counselor picked that woman up, grabbed her and just planted one right on her. Kissed a fool out of her. I mean, I mean, he got into it. Right there. He said, she sat down. He said, that's my advice right there. That's what she needs twice a week. And the guy said, well, I guess I can have her here on Tuesdays and Thursdays. <laughs> You don't get it, does he? Just don't get it. <laughs> we don't. We're dumb, buddy. We're dumb when it comes to stuff like that. We got a lot of problems. We, when you got people that different, you got problems, buddy. What well, the Bible say? Husbands love your wife. Christ loved the church. Every man in here, get down and say, Lord, am I loving my wife like I should? God forgive me. God forgive me. I'm sinning. I'm wrong. Help me to love her like Christ loved the church. All you wives, you give them that honor and respect? Or you manipulating him to get your way all the time? The Lord sees all this. 2020 was plenty of problems. Third, like quick, let me say this. I'll move on quickly. 2020 has plenty of politics. Plenty of politics. Y'all know how I feel? I can't stand politics. I hate politics. I wouldn't be a politician. I'd rather dig ditches for a living than be a politician. I have no desire to be the one whatsoever. Man asked me one time, he said, Brother Danny, what does politics mean? I said, Lord, I don't even know, really, but I, I, I try to break words down. I said, I know, I know poly. Poly means many, plural, like polygamy. Poly. And I know what a tick is. Bloodsucker. So I reckon it means many bloodsuckers. I don't know. 
That's my definition. I ain't never heard that before. But what, what politics is doing, it's, it's, it's the devil's using politics to polarize our society. Our society is becoming unraveled, people. They want to rewrite the rules, to reset. Uh, have you noticed cash is disappearing? Have you been to a restaurant lately and said, we don't want, have no change? They want you to change. How many have seen that lately? Raise your hand. All right, about half of you in here, they're getting rid of pennies and dimes and quarters, then it's going to be dollar bills, then it's going to be five, then it's going to be ten, then you ain't going to be able, it's getting more and more to where you won't be able to use cash at all, amen, uh, uh, we, we shut down the economy uh, three months ago and they said now it's not going to be long, if everybody just stay behave for a couple of weeks, this will blow over, well here we are in the middle of July and Dr. Fossey says we are knee deep in the first wave. I, something didn't work. You say, well, it's because of those. You know, whatever. I don't know. I believe, it's, I believe it's preparing the world for the Antichrist. I don't know how much is true and how much is not true, but the coronavirus has become a political lightning rod uh, for both sides at the, to be. And I, listen, I don't know of one Democrat I'd vote for, and I don't know of 25% of Republicans I'd vote for with a clear conscience. I don't know if you're mad at me or what, but if I've said something wrong, somebody correct me. Amen? The gov- I'll tell you, show you how fair I am. There's a lot of churches took money from the government because they got themselves in debt and the government bailed them out. That ain't right. We don't want or take or need government money in the house of God. That ain't, that ain't constitutional. It's wrong for the government to take taxpayer money and give it to churches. You know what's coming back down the road with that? Payback. You know what the old preachers say? With the shekels come the shackles. If the government gives you shekels, they'll wind up putting you in shackles. With God's people, we don't need their help. We, don't, we, we're, we, we belong to the Lord. The, the church is even not of this world. This building, this property here belongs to God. And if God can't take care of us, we don't need to be here no way. If you want to know who's in charge, think about who you can and cannot criticize. Is 2020 the beginning of the end? I don't know. I don't know. But I tell you what I always go by. When you listen to the news, right or left, and I, I listen to both and try to make a fair judgment, you really don't know who's telling you the truth. You really don't. But I tell you what I've always done, and I've never gone wrong with this little idea. The Bible said, I got scripture. The Bible said in John 15, 9, that the world loves its own. The Bible said in 1 John 4, 5, they are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. If the world is pushing a certain agenda or idea, you can mark it down 95% of the time it's of the devil. Not every time, 95%. The world loves its own. You know how to know. I don't tell nobody who to vote for. You can write in Charles Manson if you want to. That's strictly between you and the Lord. We don't put bondage on people here at this church. I don't control you and tell you you got to do it. No, no, no. You are free. Uh, You you can write Brother Jeff Worley in for president. That's between you and the Lord. Uh, You have total freedom to do that. That's part of your freedom as an American. But I'm going to tell you something. What you do, uh, the the biblical way is you look who 90% of the media is against and vote for the uh, vote for that guy. Not always. 95%. 95%. You say what if for both crooks? The lesser crook. I get criticized for that too. But if I'm wrong, somebody straighten me out. Listen, if Hollywood is against something, if Hollywood is against something, that's a good sign it's going the right way. If Hollywood is for something, like the green peace movement, everybody quit eating meat, kill, kill all the cows, all, all that. If Hollywood is for something, then that's a good sign it's wrong. Find out who 90% of the media hates. I'm talking about local, federal, right here in Burke County, whose who's wicked people hate and vote for them. The truth is, somebody, somebody, bigger than politicians, bigger than anybody me and you know, wants the American economy 
to collapse. And we've not even seen the beginning of the mess we're in tonight, today. It is going to be used to overthrow anybody who's pro-America. They're teaching you wrong if you're pro-America. They say, you know, if I said the, the Chinese virus, they said I'm a racist. Now, the same Ebola, Ebola, is you being a racist, we're calling it the Ebola, or the, or the West Nile virus. Everybody called the West Nile virus the West Nile virus. Why do they call it the West Nile virus? Because it came from the West Nile. It got nothing to do with people. I don't think the Chinese is, is different than I am. I, what in, that's demons making people think like that. If it started Nebo, they call it the Nebo virus. Guess what we do? Live with it. It might have. We got enough bullfrogs up there to spread something awful. Plenty of politics. And I know this is a, this is a, this is a, we call it election year, and it's going to get awful here in a few months. And we're going to keep that junk out of this church. This church ain't going to turn into a political station, but we're going to do what's right and what God, what God honors according to God's word. Last, and I'm through. Thank God the good news is 2020 is a plenty of potential. There's plenty of potential for us to do something for God. A whole lot of people made a whole lot of money this year. This actually has been good for a lot of people. Plumbers and electricians and people that are that, that, painters and stuff, man, they're getting rich because people are taking this time to do fix up their house and fix stuff they wasn't going to do. Lordy mercy, potential, the potentials, are, you can make a lot of money right now. Uh, be uh, innovative. Learn how to turn, uh, those people that turned their business, they was making carpet and now they're making masks and they're making uh, ventilators and stuff. Hallelujah, man. It's a time of potential. Now let me say to the Christians here this morning, what a time, what a time, what a time to stand up and be counted. Like the people at the crucifixion. You know where most people was at the crucifixion? They run. They couldn't take the heat. But some of them stood right by the cross, right when it was dark, right when the sun went down, right when there was lightning flashing, right when the Lord was on the cross. They stood with him. God helped shining like Baptist church to keep this little light shining all over the world during this time of 2020. It is a year of potential. You know, there's people listening to preaching now that never listen to preaching. There's people that watch me every Sunday, watching me right now, that would never have done this had not this happened. The potential is here to reach thousands and thousands and thousands. Do you know God's got some people's ear? Do you know there's a lot of people that are scared? There's a lot of people hungry. There's a lot of people desperate. There's a lot of people curious. What a time for you to take your Bible and say, let me show you what the Bible Bible says about uh, disease. Let me show you what the Bible says about plagues. Let me show you what the Bible says about the mark of the beast. Let me show you what the Bible says about a one world government. Let me show you what the people are hungry. Even the people on the news are hinting around. I heard a couple of them say, well, could this be the apocalypse? Could this be the end? All that? Get your Bible. Let your light shine, brother. Let Listen, them old lightning bugs, have y'all seen them? They're out. I think the real name for them is firefly or something like that. We always call them lightning bugs. And it'll get dark tonight. And out in my yard, right when it gets dark, you'll see a little yellow fluorescent light. And the darker it gets, the more them little lights shine. If there's, if there's out there in the day today, well, you couldn't even see them. They might do that in the daytime. We don't even know it. Can't see them little things. Little bitty light, one hundredth of a watt. Out there, out there shining. But boy, when it gets dark, there's one, there's one, there's one. How many of you used to go out in the yard and try to catch them? See how many you could catch? You know, put them in a jar, you know, and uh, we'd play with them. It's the most amazing thing. Old Frank, he don't, he's, this is the first time he remembers. He don't know what to think about them things. He just looks at them. He's scared of bugs. There's a bug go across the floor. He, Ooh, a bug. I'm telling you, stomp it, Frankie. Just go like that. That's wrong, according to the new, new green people. If it's wrong to kill Bambi, it's wrong for them hypocrites to kill roaches. Just because roach is not as cute, don't mean it don't have rights. You're going to kill all us ugly people? Hey, most are hypocrites. Kill gnats with their cars, they ought to be ashamed of themselves. Those precious gnats have rights too. Show them pandemic the Bible. Show them where they quarantined people in Leviticus that had leprosy. And that's the right time to do it. That's the right way to do it. Show them where the Antichrist 
and more coming. I'm going to say this, and I'm through this morning. That's my thing, but I'm going to stop right there. You do realize. Are you listening to me? You do realize this might be the last Sunday that we get to meet with you. You realize that? I hope and pray it ain't. I hope and pray the Lord will keep us here in line. We don't know what's going to happen this week. Oh, Brother Danny, you know something? No, no, I, don't, I, ain't, I ain't insinuating anything. If I thought something's happening, I'd tell you. But honest to goodness, the way this world went this, this half a year, we don't know if we'll be able to ever come in here next week. We don't know. This may be our last Sunday. How's things between you and God? Time to quit playing. Time to quit playing, y'all. This is serious business. Let's get right. The time may come when we can't even come to this building and meet. It's already, I mean, they made a, it a, it, there's an executive order in North Carolina right now that you can't have more than 10 people together. The only reason we can do it is because the Constitution overrode it with some preachers. That's the only reason we're allowed to come in here this morning. And it ain't even got bad yet. The next thing coming down the road, two years, five years, will be a 50 times worse. This is a kindergarten picnic compared to what's coming in this world. It's time to get right with God. 2020 is a year of plenty of potential. Get you some, hey, hey you guys, get you some of these young people and go out in the street and preach. Go out, let's go out with a bang, y'all. Put tracks all over your neighborhood. Let them think you're crazy. Listen, you know what? They'll call me names. They'll call you gone one day. They'll call us gone. Let's, let's, let's be a witness for God these crazy times that we're going to. Let's stand, please. Our head bowed. Come on, Miss Nessie's going to come play something softly this morning. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Are you backslid? Hard to keep your eyes on the Lord with all this going on. Hard to know what's true and what ain't true. You better be careful. You can be deceived. All you got for sure is your Bible. She's playing softly. I wonder how many meet me here in this hall and just say, Preacher, I want to be a light to a dark, dark world. Let's come and pray for a minute before we go. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Let's go out with a bang, y'all. Let's go out with a bang. Let's be... Let's stand up and be counted, man. Stand up and be counted. Glory to God. Let them know whose side you're on. Brother Mike mentioned a minute ago. The world knows whose side you're on. Do your neighbors know whose side you're on? Do they? Let's obey God. Let's obey God. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, help us. God, please come down and move in Shining Light Baptist Church. Help us, Lord God, I pray, to be a light to a dark, dark, dark world. We don't know what we're liable to face, even in these days ahead. I pray, God, you'd give us grace. God, give us grace. Dear God, give us grace. We'll thank you for it. People are praying. The altar's filled over here. God's speaking to your heart. There's plenty of room over here on the other side. God's speaking to hearts here this morning. Good time to come. Good time to come. You ask the Lord right now. Lord, did, did Brother Danny tell me the truth this morning? Ask him right now. Just because it hurts don't mean it ain't true. Just because you don't like it don't mean it's like, I don't like medicine. But if it's good for me, I'll take it. I don't like vinegar. But I drink it mixed with water because I need it. Sometimes that's what preaching is, like vinegar. You have to take it. Take it. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. All right. Come on, ushers, right quick, and we'll, we'll get the offering plates, and we're going to receive our offering.